In this video, I'm going to teach you all the secrets there is to finishing in the paint in NBA 2K24. And let me tell you, man, they made finishing in NBA 2K24 so enjoyable. And I'm not just talking about dunks. With the power of pro play, there are so many new animations in NBA 2K24 that will have you finishing like your real life NBA counterparts. I'm even going to show you some of the hidden finishing combos in NBA 2K24 that will completely blow your mind. And I do recommend you give my triple threat and dribbling tutorial a look. Those will teach you how to break your defenders down and why it's important to break your defenders down and choose the right layup because under the right circumstances, if you break your defender down and choose the right layup, you'll have a larger green window. As you can see right there, this is in Hall of Fame difficulty. However, choosing the wrong layup under the wrong circumstance will result in a basically zero green window. And knowing how to set your defenders up and making sure you get a good quality shot will allow you to take off the shot meter even for layups because there is a significant boost to finishing without the shot meter. Alright, so let's get started with the most basic layup which is done by holding the right stick up left or up right or holding square while holding the left stick up left or up right as you are going towards the basket. So choosing the hand in which you finish is going to be important. It's not as simple as, you know, just a left-handed layup looks good, a right-handed layup looks good. It will depend on the circumstance. Take a look at this right here. After my hezi, I choose a right-handed layup to completely cut off Kevin Looney from blocking that shot. Again, with Steph Curry right here, I choose holding the right stick to the left to completely cut off Ja. Ja does the same thing to Steph right here. Cutting off your defender will give you the right type of animation and will give you a higher probability of success. So here I already broke my defender down, Kevon Looney is right beside me, Steph is giving me the left side of the lane so I hold the right stick up left and this gives me an unblockable animation. And even though I call these your standard layups, some guys with some really good layup packages have some fancy ones like this 360 layup from John Moran. So after initiating a dunk or a layup animation, tapping square again or holding the right stick in a different direction will result in this double pump or layup adjustment. These are great in trying to avoid incoming shot blockers to give you a higher chance of success at finishing your layups. So for example here, I was gonna get blocked by Domas but then I held the right stick to the left to finish with my left hand and avoid Domas block. So this is a great tool to have just to be aware of the situation. Anytime someone's approaching you for a block, at least you have another way to bail yourself out and finish at the basket. Alright, next are your scoop layups and these are some of my favorite finishes in NBA 2K24. You simply just have to hold the right stick left or right as you are headed towards the basket. And really scoop layups are sort of like floaters, they're a great way to avoid shot blockers or incoming contact. But unlike floaters, you don't need a direct angle to the basket, even going to your right a little bit or to your left a little bit. These are quick and fast layups with a high arc to avoid incoming shot blockers. They even seal off your defender from trying to block your shot. So my advice when experimenting on how you finish is to combo these up with your different dribble moves. As you saw right there, I was able to launch out of a crossover combo into a scoop layup but because I comboed it after a size up launch, I had a different type of hesitation finish similar to what Ja does right there. These are great ways to freeze your defenders and launch into a scoop layup. Alright, next we get a cradle layup which is done by holding the right stick down left or down right towards your ball hand as you are approaching the basket. So use cradle layups anytime you have someone on your hip, it will protect the ball from that defender and allow you to finish with an uncontested layup as long as you do it correctly. So here Ben Simmons was riding my hip, I was properly positioned, just held the right stick down right and finished at the basket. But once again, this isn't a guaranteed make if you do it out of position or if someone's just really good defensively or has the right amount of badges, you will get stopped. So these clips right here are just basically using your body to protect the ball and then finishing with a cradle layup. A special layup animation for your cradle layups is the Rajon Rondo. You just have to be angled towards the basket at this specific angle and then execute a cradle layup. Alright, next we have our Euro steps which are some of the great ways to avoid incoming defenses and finish at the basket. So just hold the right stick down left or down right to your non-ball hand to execute a Euro layup. This is a great way to create misdirection anytime your defender is backpedaling or following you a certain way. It's a great way to break away from defenses and finish at the basket. 
So in this play right here, I got KD backpedaling, not really in a good defensive position. So we attack his top foot, execute a Euro step layup by holding the right stick down right, and then finish at the basket. Now, if you got a defender completely leaning towards your body, executing a Euro step layup will completely dishelve them from contact and allow you to finish at the basket wide open. Doing this at the right time also uses some great contact to get through your defender. Now again, executing this away from the basket very fast far or if there's a good defender, you'll get stopped immediately. If you combo your Euro step with different moving crossovers, for example, as I do with Donovan Mitchell right here, you might unlock a secret Euro step animation that's not necessarily in your player's layup package. And after initiating a Euro step gather, just holding turbo and holding the right stick down will combo that into a dunk. Now while holding turbo, holding the right stick down left or down right will give you hop step gathers. And this is a great way to avoid defenses or maybe cut off the angle depending on how they're defending you. You can also doing this by tapping square and holding the left stick to the left or to the right towards the direction of your hop step. Again, I like to use this in combination with my moving crossover. So after my moving crossover right here, I quickly combo into a hop step, avoid KD as I drew him to my right, hop step to my left. Here, I use it to cut off DeAndre Ayton from recovering. And for here, I use Zach Levine's nice hop step into that floater. Take a look at what we do right here after we blow by we cut off Derek White using that hop step gather so he's not able to recover and stop our floater now for those big boys like Zion using a hop step if you got fearless finisher and that physicality you'll be able to bump your defender and then from there just continue holding square to finish in this case he finishes with a floater or another thing you can do is after that bump just tap square, release square, and then hold square again. Hold the left stick in any direction to finish with an up and under. Next are your floaters, which in my opinion are some of the best finishes in NBA 2K24. Just hold the right stick down and away from the basket as we are headed towards the basket. And man, they added so many signature floaters this year. And with the float game badge, you're really going to want to play around with what you can do with floaters. And this is the perfect situation to use a floater right here. I blow by Steph. I see Kevon Looney approaching. And then I release the floater just so Kevon Looney couldn't guard me. And right there is another situation. Brook Lopez is in a sort of a drop coverage. And if you launch a floater from very far away... Your mid-range rating should help here. These are great ways to counter the defenses, but be aware of guys like Giannis who can easily defend that. The jaw signature floater again is one of those mid-range floaters and Steph actually has a step back floater, which is really sweet. It's one of the best ways to finish in traffic. Another thing you want to do in NBA 2K24 is anytime you're in a ride animation or a contact animation, initiating a floater will give you different types of contact counters into that float animation. And in my opinion, this is such a huge addition to NBA 2K24. I've gotten so many tough finishes by using a floater to counter contact. It's such a great way to punch defenders who are riding your hip aggressively. So use that nice floater package. Try and see what kind of contact and floater animations you can get. Also try using floaters at different angles to the court. This side floater right here is one of my favorites. Again, this is a nice fadeaway jump shot type floater animation. You also get these nice float animations as you are moving to, to the side and against contact. Next are your spin layups which are done by double tapping square and holding the left stick up left or up right towards the direction of your spin. You can also rotate the right stick clockwise or counterclockwise and this is a great way to avoid incoming defenses or if your defender is giving you that ride animation, a great way to shed that contact and finish at the basket. See here, after our first spin, uh, Harrison Barnes is guarding us to our left. We spin to our right and that finish is good enough to finish over Doma Sabonis. Take a look at this right here. After the triple threat launch, we get into that right animation. Double tap square. Hold the left stick up left to finish with a spin layup or a spin dunk. Next is your reverse layup which is done by holding the right stick away from the basket. And these are great counter moves to use the basket to protect yourself from incoming shot blockers. Next are your standard dunks which are done by holding R2 and holding the right stick to the left or to the right to choose which hand you want to launch with as you dunk the ball. You can also launch into a two-handed dunk animation by holding R2 and holding the right stick up 
And if you keep holding R2 for this dunk, you will extend your rim hang and basically disrespect your opponent. Holding R2 and holding the right stick down as you approach the basket will give you different types of fancy dunks, but my favorite and what should be your favorite too are your skill dunks or your meter dunks which is done by holding R2 and then quickly tapping the right stick up and then immediately holding it down or tapping the right stick down and immediately holding it up. If you got a great slasher like Zach Levine, this is something that you want to use. But of course, under the wrong circumstance, if you'd pull it off uh, against a good defender, it might be a little bit more difficult. So there you have it, everything you need to know about finishing in NBA 2K24. Master your different types of finishes because it's going to be important in determining your success at finishing the basket. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.